Hi, I'm Rick. Hi, I'm Wesley. Wesley, you work with Azure DevOps a lot, right? Yeah. And then one of the things you do is uh, you configure pipelines and you make sure that stuff builds correctly and you check status, uh, the status of code. Yep. Um, but one of the things we need in pipelines, most of the times, a lot, are secrets and variables. Yeah. Well, you. You prepared something. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of options to do something with variables, secrets, and especially secrets, you don't want them to be viewable by others. So yes. we want them to be secure. So I'm going to walk through the options there are and what you can use them for. Cool. Um, so let's start with the default pipeline. Just a simple, I have something right here and it does a script echo hello world. Doesn't really do that much. The best, so that's the best pipeline. The best pipeline. <laughs> really simple. <laughs> And it would be nice <laughs> if it would be that simple normally. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of options right here. Uh, right, ab right away you see the variables up here. For mm -hmm. now, first you can do one thing, which is add variables to the top, which yeah. is just in the template or the file itself. Mm -hmm. So make some room and you can see variables right here. Really simple, press enter. It is, it's gonna be your array, so minus. Um, first, you can mention a name. Mm -hmm. And a name could be like, this is my test variable. If you go ahead to the next line, you have something like a value. Maybe yep. even read-only, whatever. So you, don't can, uh, you won't be able to edit in the pipeline itself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna work like this, and then you say it's a test uh, value, something like that. And you can use it. So how we're gonna use it, we're gonna go to the echo, hello world, put a dollar, and put it like this. And now it knows it's there. Okay, and then I think that if I'm not mistaken, the syntax of how you, how and where you can use variables in what way, there's decent documentation on that because inside yeah. of a multi-line command script, it's different than inside of this type of script, and then it's different yeah. than yeah, yeah. There are a bit more differences. Uh, there is also the option to do it with brackets, and it is going to be in conditions, I think. Okay. So you've got variables, and then you put it like dot and like this. So okay. that would work in conditions as well. Okay. For now, uh, I'm gonna use this one just because classic always works with this kind of form. So mm -hmm. it's recognizable. This will run, this will work. But maybe you want to run a pipeline with another variable or fill it in when you are going to run it. Yeah. Maybe you want a Boolean right there just so you can configure it right away. In that case, we can use parameters. The parameters is actually the same setup as uh, above. You've got a test parameter right here, parameter, and you've got a value right below. But you've got a bit more. You've got different values, which mm -hmm. you can, uh, which it will accept. So you can uh, make a scope of what you are able to do. Uh, you've got something like a type, which is really handy, just because if you do boolean it will automatically create something like a radio button or, or a checkbox. Nice. So if I save this, and I'm gonna run it, you can see it right here. Nice. And you can check it like, you said, like this. Of course, you can do other stuff. For example, the values, what I said. Uh, you can put, it, uh, put a default there. Um, value would be uh, uh, value one. You've got value two and that kind of stuff. And the default would be for example, value one. Of course, save it. And run it. And now you've got the radio buttons, yep. which you want to choose. And so those are a bit of options to do it in the YAML itself. And uh, that, that all already helps tremendously because yeah. you, can, you can steer the user into selecting one of Expected values, yep. that's a good thing. Especially parameters is a really handy thing because if you think uh, about grouping tasks and making sure it's available to other pipelines, mm -hmm. you've got the templating stuff, but you want different variables to be put in there because if it's the same, yeah, it doesn't really help that much. You no. want to differentiate it regarding the pipeline you're using. Yep. So parameters is gonna be useful there. And the values is really handy just to make sure you're scoping stuff. For yeah. example, uh, ARM templates uh, and uh, resource groups, maybe you want to scope them on specific re uh, resource groups you can use only, or yeah. subscription IDs or service connections, whatever. Um, you also have the option to reference to external templates. For now, I'm not gonna show it, but it's gonna be the variable template, and you can use it just like template and reference the name. Okay. Which is fine. Cool. Um, but 
what if I have a secret? That would be a bit annoying if I just put it like it as secret because then you'll sh be yeah. you'll be able to show it in your yeah, code and it might get uh, output to the log as soon yeah. as you. So that might not be the best solution yeah. there. So first option would be variables. You've got variables right here. You can use something like a name and value, same setup as here, but keep this value a secret, just because it doesn't need to be shown there. Um, you also have your documentation part right here, which is the variable name. Mm -hmm. uh, you have something about replacing dots and uh, underscores and that kind of stuff, which will be really annoying if you encounter stuff like retrieving secrets from externally mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, because then it will change it a bit. Yeah. Um, other stuff like batch script, variable name, you can read it all right here. Yep. So we can put it like this. It is going to be a test, a test uh, variable secret. Uh, secret. Just put it there. Se secret value. Of course, you want to name it when you type it. Uh, you can override this value, but for now it's fine. So you can press OK. So if I'll you say it. you can override this value, then actually you're creating a secret which is also a parameter. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And in this case, you have the te test variable secret. You can copy it. You can delete it. But you're not able to see uh, the whole thing. You can, of course, go back like this. But in the end, in the library, it's not going to be possible. So secrets in here, it's fine, sort of, because you don't see it. But it's if you like have the GitHub right permissions, you can still yeah. get it back. Yeah, and it's like GitHub secrets, right? Yeah. Y you don't want this to be able to view it back. You no. do just want to disappear it in void or whatever. <laughs> Not right here, because, yeah. So this is an option. Would be fine. There's another option. There, so There always is. There always <laughs> is. So in this part here under variables you all have the option for group and group is just a, a setup of uh, all variables which are in a container yep. which actually is your library library is used in the classic version as well yeah uh, so it's reused here so that's really good so if you go to library so I'm gonna leave this for now I can create my variable group right here you also have the option for secure files mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna show that one though it's there so we've got variable groups, something of a variable group like uh, my variable group. Um, and you can add your values right here. So that would be my, my value secret, for example. And that would be secret stuff. In this case, you can lock it. Just like the secret we want it to be locked. Mm -hmm. We save it. And the moment you unlock it, it's gone. So okay, nice. you are not able to read it. Um, so for secrets, it would be really handy to put them here instead of the other variable yeah. setup. This is already a more secure setup yeah. than in the variables. Yeah. Um, it is built to hold secrets, but it's not the most secure thing Azure <laughs> and Azure DevOps has because we all know Key Vault. Yeah, that's, that's the, the most secure way of storing secrets and certificates yep. and, uh, and keys, right? Yes, it is. Uh, I thought Microsoft uses it itself as well. Yep. So it, it should be really secure. <laughs> um, in this case, what you can do is you can link secrets to the Azure Key Vault as variables. So you can edit. Uh, what it will do, it will clear the group. So you want a separate group for that. Yeah. You can confirm it. And then we can select the subscription. And this is and key name. out of the service connections that you have? No, no, this is going to be a, a, a principle which is configured in Azure. Okay. So you've got the Azure DevOps environment, which mm -hmm. is configured in your AD, and it will add the policy to the key vault that it is allowed to do a get and a list action on uh, yeah, what you, whatever you want enough, on the secret. Yeah. yeah, it's more than enough, yeah. Um, so we've got the variable management BT. And what it does, it, it now shows a variables list, which has something to do with delete, secret name, that kind of things. If I press add, I've got my contents of my key vault. And I can just check whatever I want. So I can check them. Press OK. Save this. It even shows that it's configured with key vault. And now I can go back to my pipeline. Copy the name, which is the pipeline repo. And in variables, we can add the group right here. So in this case, I can add my use my variables right here. 
put the name there, it will okay. retrieve it from Key Vault or retrieve from a library which is connected to Key Vault and then it will use it. Um, if you do it like an echo, uh, I think it will put uh, asterisks like uh, not the actual yeah. value there. Because, yeah, because it's smart enough to know, hey, this is a secret. Yeah, you, you don't probably want don't want to nope. put that so in the logs. It, it's going to pass it on to other services, but it's not going to view it in the console uh, yeah. and you're not going to see it there. Cool. And this would be enough just to use the variable. So there would be key vault, but maybe you don't want to configure key vault a direct connection. Maybe you want to do it another way. Maybe you use service connections or maybe just retrieve simple secrets. Maybe you want to do it in runtime and define mm -hmm. which ones you use. So there's another option. And we've got it right here in tasks, which is a key vault. And you've got the download Azure key vault secrets option, which basically is a service connection with a key vault. And it's the same as before and I can filter my secrets, whatever I want. I can make them available to the whole job, mm -hmm. which actually does run, uh, runs the task first, uh, prior to all the others. Yeah. So it makes sure that all the secrets are available to the others. And then it just puts them in environment variables or in, in local it, it variables? It will just or? make sure it's like, for example, the variables, yeah. which is uh, shown on the screen here. Uh, it will just do it like that. So you can talk to it the same way. Okay. Um, and you can just edit as a step. So we can edit right here. And now it works. That's actually pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah. And now it downloads all the secrets. Even if you add new secrets, it downloads it. So yeah. maybe you want to think of a, a specific filter. Yeah, that's the good thing with the variable groups, I think, is that you can explicitly say, yeah. I would like this secret. And yeah. yeah, it is. And if you have a look at maybe you don't want to get your secret, maybe you want to store like configuration, normal right. variables, maybe they are used in a test environment, staging environment, and you want to share them because the variables for ARM templates is going to be the same probably as the environment itself. Yeah. So maybe you can configure it somewhere central. So there you have app configuration, also I a familiar one. thought you were one. going there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so reference to episode five, yeah. which we already yeah. discussed yeah, yeah, there. True. Yeah, I love app configuration and Key Vault, by the way. So yeah, I think it's awesome that the integration is also there for Azure DevOps. Yep, it is. So the setup is completely the same as Key Vault. So in this case, we have app configuration. Um, small thing, you need to install the extension first. So okay. I already did that, but yep. you need to install it in your organization in mm -hmm. DevOps. But same goes for this one. We have an Azure subscription. We have the app configuration, which is going to be the same name. You have the key filter, some sort of a label, it specifies which label should be used when selecting key values. So it's more like yeah, a that's brief the, fil the filtering inside filtering. of app configuration where you can yeah. actually label values for yeah. dev, test, acceptance, production. So and that would be really nice to filter on that. Yeah. Nice. Um, and the same goes for this one. Add it to your pipeline. And you're good to go. And you're good to go. Everything which is there is configured and is retrieved back to the pipeline and you can use it. Cool. That's it. Nothing more to do. That's actually pretty powerful. Yeah. And uh, I know a, a couple of customers who've been working with secrets inside of Azure DevOps. I will definitely point them to this episode where you very clearly explained how this works. Yeah. Thanks for the demo. You're welcome. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.